answer to the data analysis for the measurement and uncertainty lab. So part A is, um, there's nothing really to analyze. You're just going to copy down whatever temperatures you got for your three water baths. Um, just record the temperature and then take a picture of the hot, the, the thermometer in the hot water bath so you can, um, so we can just check to make sure you're reading the thermometer correctly. So it's just practice reading the thermometer. Uh, the next part was just finding the tear weights. So you, again, no data analysis there. You're just going to copy down those weights. Let's just practice using the balance. And then, and you're going to insert a picture of the one ounce cup on the balance. And now finally we get to do some data analysis. So for this part, you measured the cup, you weighed the cup um, 10 times, and you should get slightly different you know, variations of, of what that mass is. And that last significant um, digit, that last digit there, is going to fluctuate. It's going to change. You'll see it flicker sometimes. It'll be a little bit different every time you weigh it. Uh, but in the same, you know, same order of magnitude, so this is 9.95, it's 9.96. So what you want to do is find the average. So the way you find the average is you're going to add up all these numbers. So you're going to add up 9.95, 9.96, 9.94, blah, 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 blah add them all up, and then divide by 10, and that's how you get your average. So that should be pretty straightforward. I did that in Excel, um, so I just said, you know, I put them all in here, and then I just say equals average, and then highlight this row so I don't have to do it all up by hand. Great, that's my average is 9.95. And then to find the deviation from the average, I'm going to compare each one of these to the average. So I'm going to say for this one, uh, 9.95 minus 9.94. Great, that one's 0.01. You're going to do that for, for all of them. If you're going to use Excel, you need to freeze this reference so you're always comparing it to 9.94. Otherwise, it'll, it'll drag it down through the rest of these. Um, and then also, you might want to do the absolute value of this. And I'll show you how to do this by hand, too, in case you're not um, a fan of Excel yet. You will be by the end. <laughs> so those are all my deviations. Again, if you want to do that out by hand, you would just do, now that I know my average, I'll just do a couple here for you. All right, so I had, for the deviation there, I would have um, 9.95 minus 9.94, and we got 0 0.01. And then you'd have down here 9.96 minus 9.94, 0 0.02, um, 9.94. I think you see what's happening here. This is not going to be the hardest part of the lab. Well, zero, it's okay to get zero. If you get a negative number, just make it positive. You're taking the absolute value. Um, great. So that's what you're going to get there. You can even find the average of the deviations, right? So just add up all of these and divide by 10. That will also get you the, the average. I can't remember if I asked you to do that or not. All right. So that's, uh, that's that part. That's part C. And then part D, you were measuring um, seven... Uh, a volume of water, right? So we, we measured out seven uh, mils of water in the graduated cylinder. Uh, you did 20, you know, about 25, 24 mils in the um, 50 mil graduated cylinder, and then 75 mils in the beaker. So you're testing, you know, this three pieces of, you know, glassware, well, plasticware, but usually we have glassware. Um, so you have the temperature, and again, you need the temperature because the density, you have to look at the density at that temperature. It's going to be slightly different depending on what your temperature is. So if I use a different temperature, I mean, I have a different, I have 22 here. When I did this lab before, I got like 19. So depending on what, how, how high the heat is up in my house or how cold it is outside, um, this temperature is going to change, which is going to affect the density ever so slightly. Uh, we're, we're going to look at our density with like four significant figures. So measure our water volume. Uh, we measured our, uh, we weighed our containers, all of our containers, empty, and then when, or, sorry, empty, here's the empty mass, and then when it was full. So we did the empty uh, measuring in part B, right, so you, you should have those masses, and then um, filled with whatever volume of water we have. And so to find the mass of the water, you're just going to subtract these two numbers, right? So for here, I can even type this out, I'm going to have 16.60 minus 9.61. That's how I solve for that. I got 6.99. I think typing is prettier than my writing. <laughs> 47.02 minus 22.04. That's going to give me 24.98. The same thing over here. 108.82 minus 32.80 equals 76.02. So the balance gives me two decimal places, so that's what I'm going to keep um, when I do my subtraction. So even if one of these ends up being zero, I wouldn't put like 
you know, 6.9, I would put 6.90. So if that last number is there, make sure you show two, two decimal places on your balance because that's, that's indicating how many significant figures we have in that number. Now, to find the density of water um, from table one, what we're going to do is go back to the lab, the procedure in the lab, and you have this density table. Okay, so depending on what temperature you have <laughs> at your house, um, you're going to find out the density of water at that particular temperature. So I think my temperature was 22, I think it was. Yep, 22. So the way I use this chart, mine's 22.0. So I would go to 22.0. This is telling you the decimal decimal place there. So this is 22.0, this is 22.1, 22.2, 22.3. I have 22.0 here. So that's mine, 0.9978. So that's the density that I have for water. <laughs> if I can find the right table. Alright, 0.9978. And that's for all of them because they were all at the same temperature. Okay, and now I can calculate what the volume would be based off of the density and the mass. So this is my mass data. I have mass data for all of these. I know what the density is. I know that density is mass over volume. So if I wanted to calculate the volume based off of the density and the mass, volume is equal to mass over density. So for this guy here, for the um, 10 mil graduated cylinder, my mass is 6.99 grams and my density is 0.9978. So I'm just going to take 6.99 divided by that. I get 7.01. I'm going to do the same thing. 7.01. Oh. And then over here I'm going to do the same thing. Um, for the 50 mil graduated cylinder, I'm going to take this mass. Oop, that's this uh, 24.98 and divide that by the density 0.9978. And I get 25.04. 25.04. These are my calculated volumes. And I'm going to do the same thing for the last one. Um, the beaker, I have 76.02 divided by 0.9978. And I get 76.19. Great. Um, now to find the percent error, I'm going to compare this volume, which is my calculated volume. I'm going to take that to be like my theoretical value, right? So I'm going to take this to be like my theoretical value here. Theoretically, if everything went well, that's what I should get. And then I have a measured measured um, quantity. So that's my measured amount or my experimental. So I'm going to look at those two volumes. So this is a volume. This is a volume. This is a volume. You can see they're pretty close. This is a volume, this is a volume. So what I'm going to do is see which one gives me the lowest percent error. All right, so for that one, I've got 7 and I've got 7.01. Well, that's pretty good. So the percent error um, is going to be the absolute value. I'm taking absolute value. So it's the difference between the measured and the, and the theoretical. So I'm going to do measured minus theory divided by theory times 100. Okay, so for that first one, my measured was 7, so I'm going to have 7, my theoretical was 7.01, all right, divided by 7.01, you could say that's right on the money, times 100, and that gives me, oh, very small, 0 0.0, .0 one three, I think, or, or seven three, I can't even find my, read my writing. Couldn't read my own writing there, that was 0.143%. And then I'll do the same thing for um, this 50 mil graduated cylinder. So I'm comparing 25.04 and 24.9. So I'm gonna have 24.9 minus 25.04, take the absolute value of that, divided by 25.04. And that gives it times 100, times 100. Don't forget that, times 100. And that gives me 0.559%. So you can see this one's 0.1, 
this one's 0 0.55, so I'm getting a little bit worse there. The 0.1 um, gives me a little lower percent error. And then the last one, I'm comparing 75 and 76.9. And that should be, yeah, 75. Okay. So I have 75 minus 76.19 divided by 76.19 times 100 gives me 1.56%. So that's not the best. That's probably the worst one. That gives me the worst worst percent error, which is still not even that bad. I, I, was, just, I was expecting it to be a bit worse. Um, so that's how you do that last part. And then you, just, you can show some sample calculations here, kind of walk you through those same calculations, and then answer some questions. And that's it for this lab. Make sure that in this lab, sorry, that you also write... Um, You'll have an introduction, description, conclusions, um, abstract, all of that stuff. And that's all in the lab report guidelines to, to walk you through how to write all, a good lab report.